Hello everybody, this is our second His and Hers live stream that we've done. If you haven't watched the regular weekly series where we talk about all things Battlefield 4, we've been doing a lot of um, loadout things and what our favorite guns and setups are for various classes in BF3 and BF4. You should check those out. It actually, uh, I like getting feedback on those, and I should probably say who we are for those that don't know. But you can see <laughs> the our Twitter handles underneath, I'm OlaKChalk1, and to my left left over here <laughs> that'd be katie peekaboo bang um crazy cookies is the smart ass of course Laguna. Yes. we all know the, that the you have to put the in front of his name <laughs> he's the the Duh. smart ass. the one yeah. not the da one. that's too gangsta but just like <laughs> the smart ass yeah. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I like getting the response. I like hearing from people what their preferred loadouts were in Battlefield 3, even because a lot of people still play that. And I honestly sometimes miss the simple days of just having a few attachments to choose from, not 12 different silencers. Well, we say that, but then, like, it's really great having two scopes on, I mean, being able to have a magnifier and a holo and being able to really customize that. So you say that, but then you're like, oh. <laughs> it's true. It's um. Well, I think that there's some things that we don't need. I don't think I know this is not what we're going to talk about, but um, like we don't need multiple suppressors, in my opinion. But I do love the magnifier or even the canted iron sights. That that's really cool. It also, seems really badass to be able to do that. I remember that in Warfighter, and that was sort of one of the more fun things to do on a nice DMR. Was sort right. of well, and on an on an LMG, it's really nice to be able to throw a magnifier on there and still yeah. have your your hello or whatever. Well, that will actually come to the forefront, I think, in the support kit video that we'll do on Friday, mm -hmm. Friday or next week, next week actually. I think this Friday we're doing some basic tactics stuff. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, proper cornering. We're gonna educate people. Yes. Where you are, I will demonstrate well, how not to do yeah, things. Yeah, how not to do things, yeah. That's my job. I'm, I like my yeah, job. I'm constantly yelling at you when we play that you're... Don't stop in the door. <laughs> it's my doorway. I'm defending this spot. No. <laughs> okay. So we'll have that on Friday, um, which should be fun. And then the support kit loadout will be next week. And that those those two times magnifiers on LMGs are brilliant. Mm -hmm. So you're right. I do... I do like well, you could still do ones. that in Battlefield 3, have a magnifier on there, but you could only have the well, you? Well, yeah, you could only right. have one. But, but, it right, wasn't, but you couldn't have both. So being there able wasn't to have like both. a two times, though. It was either one times for the RDS, like, and then 3.4, right. I think, is the lowest right. magnification after. But I still like I like having that ability. To, I even That's the one thing that I bind to my mind. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> because it was... <laughs> Nothing. Never mind. Mm. We'll we'll talk about that later. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it's one thing I actually bind to my mouse button to be able to switch back and forth. I think it's V on the keyboard. But yeah. um switching back and forth between that or toggling laser sights on and off and because I think I'm being stealthy I, when I turn I them off. I only use laser sights in one situation, which that'll come up later in okay. uh, our recon class video, but um in the recon class video. Yeah. Now I'm intrigued. That's mm. going to be a difficult one to do for me personally, anyways. Recon. Yeah, I play a lot more recon than I used to. Well, because we have a lot more choices weapon wise, I feel like you're not just limited to shotguns, PDWs, and actual sniper rifles. But the addition of C4 has made me want to use recon more in BF4. Mm. That's made a difference. You just want to make things go boom. I do. Yeah. I like making things go boom. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so Naval Strike map design. Now, we've played Naval Strike for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we thought of, you know, we talked about Carrier Assault, Tim and I did on the last Battlefield podcast, even though he likes calling it Carrier Strike. It's actually Carrier Assault, um, which is a, a sort of a fun game mode, and we talked about that. So if you want to hear some of our opinions, and I know you and I share a lot of those opinions and what may need to be tweaked. But we figured sort of let's talk about what is the standout feature in Naval Strike as far as we're concerned. And I, we actually think that the maps are really well done. Mm -hmm. Game modes aside, you know, there may be issues with carrier assault or whatever, but the maps by themselves in conquest mode, I tried playing them in the different modes yesterday in the last couple of days, but it's it's actually hard to find servers playing anything other than carrier assault and 
conquest large like even domination is hard to find yeah uh i really think the maps of naval strike are like the standout thing of the entire dlc like that is the one just i'm looking searching for the word and i can't find it but I think that's the one thing that like tops the whole list of good things to come out of the DLC would be would be the maps, which, you know, could be good, but it also could be bad that that's the number that's one thing. The number but one I, yeah, yeah, but I I love the maps. Like they, uh, we were playing one day and someone said you know they just feel like Battlefield, which is what you want. Well, that's what you're going for when you're when you're building maps. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. They do, and I know one of the, my concerns originally before the DLC came out was that there was going to be too much power given to attack boats or whatever, but I think they've actually designed the maps in such a way that, yeah, attack boats are, you know, they're forced to be reckoned with, but you can still play on the center islands or the larger islands and sort of not have to worry about them, you know. I was worried that you'd constantly get shot at by an attack boat no matter where you were kind of deal. Um, and they're also really nice and varied, that I quite enjoy that. Like it's taken me a while to sort of correlate the maps with the, with their names, and I still have a. I brought them up on a <laughs> on my other monitor just in case because I don't want to talk yeah. on my ass more than necessary. And well, you're uh, bad with map names in general, so yeah. It, it and that's one of those things in BF3. I used to be able to tell map names off, you know, instantly. Like it was just ingrained in my brain. But BF4. Not quite so much more you vanilla more so yeah it depends on how I much think, you play them. I think so far Wavebreaker is my is my favorite. And that's the one with a submarine in it. Submarine, which is, which yeah. is nice that they did that because you think naval strike and you think tropical islands, whatever, not going to be a lot of indoor structures, and on most of the maps there isn't. Right. But they managed to really pull that together. Like you have the combination of outdoor and helicopters and boats and all that stuff but you can literally play the entire round indoors in the sub base back and forth and yeah. we've done that before between the flags and it's a pretty good design well it gives everyone <clears throat> like a flavor you know what i mean like for the boat people they get the boats and the for the you know heli pilots there's little birds outside and um for the CQB players, there's the indoors. Like there, there's a little bit of something for everyone on that map, which is which is pretty great. Yeah, and the the fact that the map is sort of symmetrical indoors mm -hmm. is also it lends itself to um, sort of familiar gameplay. Like you get into it really easily, you get used to it. You you learn. Yeah, there's a few different paths that take maybe a little while to figure out, but for the most part, you can you can do that typical battlefield thing where you go back and forth. Like, you circle around those three flags, capping them, and just having firefights in between. And also, the evolution in, in that map doesn't really detract from the gameplay. No. Once that sub drops, then it just... it's there. No big deal. A little more I found my little honey hole, too. Once the sub drops and you have those little ledges, like, between where it breaks... Yeah. People don't pay attention right by the flag and you can just kind of hop up and push yourself up on the curve of the of the circle there and right. just it's toss just, your med kit, and just wreck people. It's pretty great. There are there are some places like that. I remember there's one uh like a heating pipe or something like that that you can boost somebody up on. Yeah. And um I'm sure people will figure that out the more that they play, but when we first did that, and this was like day one or two of the DLC coming out. Yeah, I was like, hey, come here. No idea. Jump up here. <laughs> I jumped up there, and you went on. I must have laid up there for like 10 minutes just shooting people, and nobody knew where I was. It was great. And then they figured it out, and then I was there. Yeah, well, because they fixed that pesky kill cam, so you couldn't really hide forever. Yeah, bastards. <laughs> I'm glad that they did that, though. Yeah. But... Even though it's not quite perfect, but it's it's much better than it used to be. Um, so Lost Islands, the one with the giant, like the crashed passenger jet in the middle of the map, that one's a fun one as well. And it's a whole different experience because it's very, it has a very outdoorsy battlefield feel to it. You know, you have some height changes, but not drastically, right? Just like on top of rocks, it's, but it's a pretty flat map. And again, on that one. I, I like that a lot of these maps, you can walk between flags. You don't have to try and get into a boat. You can still do stuff on foot. 
Yeah, they really uh, lend themselves, in, uh, that map in particular, to some shallows so that you can really make your way across. And um, they've made some paths that are marked by little wood uh, like right. posts for the for the four wheelers, so they know you know what's the road. Yeah, yeah, and just as they said in the chat, that that jet area is always chaos, and it's it's mm -hmm. fun. Uh, there's fingerprints. This this occurred to me just now, but there was fingerprints on the fucking windshield of the jet, and I don't know why, and it drove me crazy. It drove us crazy. We were yeah. we were hunting, and we were like, "Why are they here?" This was before <laughs> the Phantom Prospect password was found. Word came out. We were trying to figure it out, and we we're like, "What is this?" <laughs> we went off into like the deep end of stuff. There's some yeah. weird things, yeah. but I'd still like to have that explained. Like giant fingerprints. I don't mean like a little one, like a you know twelve foot fingerprint on the windshield. <laughs> Um, that's odd, but that I think is... too that that's probably the spot where most people end up going because it's it literally is the center of the map. It feels yeah. like it's the the epicenter of everything. So and it's a focal point, and you can you know that plane doesn't start as open. Like you have to actually set some jet fuel on fire, and it explodes, and then you can go into it, and so it it adds that sort of additional cover that you can create to defend that flag as well and because the approaches to it can be pretty like they're pretty wide open there's not a lot of cover getting there yeah which is also kind of fun because as far as i was trying to play some more recon stuff in preparation for that video and just trying to do some more sniping in general or even like long range dmr stuff and those maps work pretty well for that because for the most part you can see fairly long distances so you have that medium to long range combat that you can have if you choose to. Mm -hmm. So I really love that cave area in that map in particular. Uh, yeah. The one behind the waterfall. See mm -hmm. the maps are a good size to like, they're, they're large, but they're not so large that you get lost in them or that you can't travel easily between points. Like some of the mm -hmm. armored kill maps were like that in battlefield three that were just like, Oh shit, I can't get in a vehicle. I might as well stop doing what I'm doing because this is going to suck. Right. But here you can There's no hoofing it from, you yeah. know, A to E. No. <sighs> and that cave is well designed. Like, I like those little touches because you didn't, you know, they could have just as easily stuck another flag on an island and said, screw it, that's that. But the cave alone could be, like, the area around the cave and some other games, that's the map. Like, it's just that size on that scale because it's that well designed even you have multiple entrances through the water the little tunnels um you'll be on top of the cave and it took me a while Drop to down. first figure out the very first time i the very first time i spawned into naval strike i spawned on top of that flag on top of the cave and i'm like what's going on here where the hell's the flag i'm looking at it it's like <laughs> below me it's like it's not there did they break it that bad <laughs> but so that Maybe. was that was that was fun. I, like, I, I I like that design. Operation Mortar. Now that's the one with the giant hill and the little castle ruins on top. Right with the cannons. With the cannons. The Which let me just say that map. I love that map, but it absolutely blows on rush. It is the most awful situation I have ever been in as a defender of that map on rush. Yeah. Yeah. It was. <sighs> well. As a defender or as an attacker or both? Because when you're defending... Was that the one we got stuck on when we were playing Rush on that map too? I think it was. No, it wasn't. No, yes, it was. No, it wasn't that one. No. We got stuck on uh, that We were defenders Mantra. on that one because remember we, we were on the top of the hill and you were like, you know, it'd really suck if there was a heli here. <laughs> yeah. And then the helicopter... <laughs> and the heli shows up, right. <laughs> but see, you would think that defending that top that king of the hill type scenario would be better than attacking it we just had a really bad team well it that was, too and I, I agree with you crazy that rush is horrible in bf4 but in particular that map so far i just absolutely want to die yeah it's that's a rough you one, do but... a lot so i get my wish <laughs> like, it's, rush is one of those game modes that's incredibly can be incredibly frustrating if you end up on a team that just doesn't gel well for whatever reason whether you're attacking or defending it can be it can be bad but um that map still is kind of fun though even just playing it in conquest because having that high flag up on the on the hill is kind of cool and for that one again there's multiple paths up there you can well the tunnels beneath are yeah. almost 
almost maze like like they're yeah you very got lost confusing. i did a I, couple I was times, in there and so you're like, like running past me like i don't know where i'm going <laughs> the mini map is not helping me <laughs> no that's true the mini maps are no good <laughs> it's like... no but it's still and you know the cannons are a nice touch i mean they're mm -hmm. gimmicky but... i haven't really gotten to use one yet though I used it and I shot it at nothing and then I got killed because if you have a busy game, you kind of make yeah, for well, an easy target sitting there. That's with any stationary weapon though in the game. Yeah, exactly. But they're they're kind of neat. And again, the scenery, you know, you have what, two, two or three other flags on that same island. So you have a lot of infantry play because the terrain doesn't, you know, there, there's no APCs or anything like that. So... At least I think you have you have the one down off to the right by the and then the one on top and then I think there's three flags total on that particular island. Yeah, or maybe I think there's four. Depending there's like these on, little resort yeah. village mm -hmm. type things, which are actually fun to play in because those buildings are they provide cover to a certain degree, but they're somewhat destructible. Like the firefights in them, for the most part, for me, have been really enjoyable. Like that's what I I like about the map design that when you're fighting over a flag you have different ways of defending it or attacking it, and it's never quite dull. You know, it's, it's more than just, oh, here's a flag in the middle of, you know, a small island. There's some like that, but... We've also had whole matches where we spent most of the time around one of the outlying flags on one of those islands, that one that has um, two multi-story buildings that are connected with, like, piers and cement walkways, kind of, and the helipad. I don't know on what map that was exactly, but... I, I like it every time that they With can... With the little, like, bungalows that you can't get into? <clears throat> no, I mean, the, they're like cement buildings. We were playing with maybe Scanner and Chadman and... Um, oh, like the little fortresses yeah. that were, where I saw the anti-AA mines, like, right, all six of like them in a row. Of, yeah, like, the yeah, yeah. It's like corn stalks. I was like, <laughs> what is going on up here? But I like Which, when those they maps... were actually pretty well placed because... They were. Yeah, they... Wrecked they've, a little bird then. <laughs> they've actually turned out to be not as bad or poorly balanced as I had thought. They're they're in the game, but they don't play a big part of the game, as far as I've noticed. So that's good. But I like how on those maps, like we probably spent ten minutes just on that one flag, battling mm -hmm. over it, which is always a good sign when you can do that and it can go back and forth. And we were able to like drop in from a helicopter, um, and and sort of have almost an entire game around one flag and the surrounding area. Yeah. And that can be, f and, and have fun doing it, not be frustrated by it. You know, it was a good back and forth. And that to me is a sign of good map design when you can have those kind of reactions around individual areas on a map. And they all stand out and they're all unique because that was a totally different experience than fighting on top of the hill or, right. you know, around the airplane. And it's really great to see that happen in, and more open maps like that don't necessarily have a bottleneck like of an indoor area you know it's not always the indoor area that you're that you're having that um back and forth at you know it's good to see it on some open area flags and and that kind of thing so chat asked how about playing in parasol storm with snipers i've never played snipers on parasol storm but i actually find that in general the four maps in naval strike are better designed than parasol storm because to me in Parasol Storm, the attack boats play a much bigger role. And the way that you get from one flag to another, for the most part, except for like the two flags that are on the same island, um, is much more frustrating. You do end up doing a lot more swimming or being on a jet ski or something to, to capture well, flags. Well, there's the two bridges that connect things, but they're, they go all the way to the outside, basically, yeah. of the curve of the map. And so it's either go that route and take every flag on the way, or swim you yeah know, and swimming on that map gets you killed pretty quickly mm -hmm. and some of those trips around there they take you almost out of the play like i don't i don't like the experience of playing a game where you travel from one flag to the other and you have nothing to go through like you just have to you travel around the map for the sake of getting there and that's a little it's a little dull i don't know like i want a little bit more action and it felt like in naval strike no matter what map, when you go from one flag to the other, you will find something to do along the way. Yeah. Um, I played Domination on Lost Islands, 
which takes place entirely inside a carrier. I did that yesterday with Scanner Barkley, and uh, it's actually really well designed. Like, all the flaws of carrier assault mode aside, um, just playing inside the carrier itself was sort of reminiscent of... it. You know, it's sort of a mix between Locker and Metro without a lot of the frustration, because there's a lot of paths, and it's... There's a lot of weird little rooms that you run into, and then it's nothing. It's just like a bedroom like with a bunk in it and no other exit. But um, it, it played pretty well. That'd be called a rack, by the way. Uh, okay. <laughs> this boat really has some nice racks. I didn't want to go there, but I'm just trying to, you know, you said it. Eh, leave it to me. I'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> But it's 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 a nice design again that to have that even though I kind of wish that they I was expecting domination to take place outside on some of the maps but I think in a lot of them it's just inside the carrier. That's a unique um, feature then of those maps. Instead of just a smaller scale of the map itself, they've actually chosen to to put the flags inside the carrier, which is I think that's pretty cool. It is, and and the gameplay is entirely different. Like if you don't mm -hmm. like playing Conquest Large or something, and you don't want to deal with um, being shot at by helicopters or boats or whatever. For that game mode, it was it, much faster paced, obviously, like Domination is. <clears throat> and just the fact that it was all indoors. Um, lots of different pathways, even between the flags. You know, it was there was really no bottlenecks. Like, there's a couple of small ones, but they're just, like, medium-length hallways that if you have people protecting them from the other side, it can be difficult to get through. But there's, like, three or four different paths around that if you run into that situation. So that was actually pretty enjoyable. And that was 48 players, so it was a little busy. If it was a few you know, a few less, it would have been probably even better of a gameplay. But what I found a shame was that, like, I was trying to, you know, play some obliteration or even defuse or something, and I found no servers running in North America, mm. anyways, that weren't full now. A while ago, I looked for something and I found that in Europe, there's a lot, there seems to be a lot more variety in the game modes on Battlefield servers. But here it was just Conquest, Conquest, Carrier Assault, Conquest, Conquest, which is fine. But I, I sort of wanted to get that different experience. I was like, I'd like to play Rush on Wavebreaker. You know, I, I want to see what that's like. I haven't had an opportunity, not because I didn't want to, it's just I haven't found a server that does that. So. I think that has a lot to do with maybe the emotional state of Battlefield players in the U.S. right now. Just in general. They just aren't willing to really experiment. Like, I remember in Battlefield 3, the number of servers... Were, well, that too, and uh, you know, Xbox and consoles don't have rentable servers right, right. now. And, Which they um, better get soon, because I feel bad I think, for those people. I think a lot of people just on the state of the game are not as willing to rent a server and pay for it uh, as they were. And the people that do run servers um, struggle to fill them up, so they kind of go to the go-to modes, which is Conquest right. or Carry Assault, because it's a new thing. I, I would imagine that, unfortunately, if people you know rent a server and set it to Rush, not a lot of people are going to play it. So they're... Be Tony, you're like, always unstable, child. <laughs> child. It's <laughs> true. Uh. Uh, so, okay, so, map design, naval strike, really quite good. We're Matthew pleased. It... I'm pleased with it. I like it. It makes me happy. It makes me want to play it, too. Like, when I want to play Battlefield and I sort of think about what should we play, you know, I want to play on the vanilla maps or Second Assault, then naval strike is sort of at the top of the list for me right now. Not even right. carry assault, just conquest. I just want to play on those maps. They're fun to play on. Tony, don't get upset. It'll be okay. <laughs> I was waiting for the reaction. I was like, delay. Counting down. All right, you want to talk a little bit about Dragon's Teeth? Yes, Dragon's Teeth. So All that... out urban warfare is what their little blurb says. So we're we're going to talk about what we kind of hoped for with uh, with that DLC and those maps. Yeah, because that will come out soon. I'm for... I'm sorry. No, I said it will come out soon, apparently. Like uh, in, this summer. Yeah, June, maybe. Soon. Go ahead. Um, 
I'm hoping for more like Grin Bazaar style maps, very urban, laid out like that. Um, I enjoy. I know a lot of people hated Bazaar uh, in what on earth is. I'm that? doing that for Tony. Oh, it's not. A, it's yes, it is a wolf shirt. Wolf it's shirt. a it's a Game of Thrones ghost wolf ale shirt. <laughs> it's role reversal. Sunday, I'm you're wearing a I've, PFP I've, shirt. You know, what? nothing I have to say is nearly as important as the wolf shirt. Clearly, I'm just going by what the chat wants. Let's just talk about the wolf shirt, shall we? <laughs> but not talk anything about Game of Thrones, because I haven't seen it yet. So everybody, no, uh, no don't neither say anything. Have I, so. no, I will shoot your kneecaps out if you say So something. you want Grand Bazaar type maps and Dragon's Teeth? Yeah, well, I want more urban style like that. Um... I enjoy that kind of gameplay. It takes me back to Counter Strike, you know. Infantry focused. Yeah. For the most part. But I'd also like to see. We talked about this, an actual night setting for a map, because so far we have yet to really. And I was disappointed in BF3 and one of the in Armored Kill were like, "Oh, it's a night map." No, it wasn't. It was a map with dark blue tint to it. <laughs> yes, Tony, it's a. <laughs> what are you wearing, Tony? <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah, we did talk about that having an actual night map, like where you can actually use iron V scopes or something. And I actually said it would be kind of cool if we had um, night vision goggles. That, right, as know, a gadget. Be, yeah, just a gadget that's available to every class or whatever. That shouldn't be difficult to do. I actually think it would look kind of good in Frostbite because. I think in BF3 that topic came up and they said, yeah, well, night vision's kind of hard to make look good. But they do it in vehicles. They do it, they even do the uh, infrared vision. So they, you know, it doesn't look bad. And when they talk about those small levolution effects... Having... No, not... Hold on. <laughs> not, not metro. Not more metro. Just urban like metro is urban but it's also linear like i'd like to see it's like also when mostly you have indoors conquest. right and bizarre was you could boost up into like roofs and on top of the little banners and there was you know there were it was urban without being linear is what i mean when you played conquest large like now when you played right. uh conquest small it was basically linear yeah because you had that alley um, basically right right was, it was yeah. you know and um, so, you know, I'd like to see more just urban with a lot of building cover and, um, you know, streets, that kind of thing. And that's basically what I think it's going to be because of they've already said it's going to be worn torn cities in, in China and it's going to be urban warfare. And uh, someone talked about we were talking about this what, yesterday. Someone said, you know, a really cool map would be that hangar, that that huge hangar that you're in from the single uh, player, from the single player yeah. which I agree. I think that would be. An amazing, especially domination or something like that. Yeah. Um, and it it's almost reminiscent to me of the old Counter Strike map, the Deagle Five map, where it was nothing but boxes. You're in a big room, and it's just wooden boxes everywhere, and it's nothing but cornering and slicing the pie craziness, and people jumping over boxes, and um, you know, there's not really. There are some places for for snipers, but it's not sniper happy or sniper friendly. No. Mind you, that did happen a lot on Grand Bazaar snipers, but... Well, yeah. Anytime you have any sort of long distance, you're going to... I mean, that's kind of their job. Snipers will be... Yeah. Yes. Um, I think those kind of maps would lend themselves well, and I just want to see a map that's properly dark, and then you could have um, that micro-levolution, as they like to call it, where you can turn lights on or off and actually fuck people up when they're wearing their night vision goggles. Like, I, I think that would be... Because I think that would actually look good in Frostbite, because I think the Frostbite engine is well-equipped to do that kind of stuff. It does really well with lighting and shadows and, and that kind of depth of field. Flares and flashbangs would be interesting with that, Right, because right now the flashbangs really... Don't... Well, no, they will blind your ass I know, but right there. They... they'd be better <laughs> if it was in the dark. Yeah. No, I didn't like Death Valley's Midnight Blue. That was to me that was a bit of a cop out because you didn't need flashlights. You didn't need anything to illuminate the dark with. It was just a, a darker version of any other map. Right. I, I 
there was a couple of maps, and I, you know, I don't remember the names or anything like that, but Battlefield 2 Special Forces had sort of better night maps than BF3 ever had. Yeah. And Well, in a BF3, it was very easy to mess with your graphics settings and lighten up everything to a point that... I mean, especially I used them in Metro where people couldn't hide in those trains anymore or in the corner. Uh, yeah. So you can really, I mean, you could lighten them up to a point where it doesn't matter. Well, that's true. Maybe that's one of the reasons that they've never really done night maps or whatever. But like I'm thinking back to DayZ, for example, when you play on night service, that's an entirely different experience than in a daytime map. And I think it, you know, just one map and people may hate it. Or like it, but I just like to see. I think I I want them to give it a try, because I feel like they've been afraid of that and they've been avoiding that and not wanting to go there. Pussies. <laughs> you just want it void of all light, like. Pretty much. No, I want well, a proper that's gonna be dark so map. You've played like, Daisy here, and night. Here's your night. map. It's a black. It's space. We Wait. just we've. <laughs> you've you've played Daisy at in... night. You know what that looks like. It's not pitch black. But like, it's close. it can be, but there's there's like this in between. Like, okay, think of like 10 p.m. day Z time. That's what I want. But why do I actually need that as a time zone in my brain? It already is now. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. I'd be it's... like, oh, it's like 10 p.m. day Z time. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> but I it would give some more use to flashlights and stuff like that because I don't, you know, flashlights used to annoy the shit out of people in BF3 because they were so damn bright. And. I don't know. I just want some of those gadgets to be more worthwhile. Nobody uses an IRNB scope unless they're trolling. Or, and they're this really just trolling themselves, I should specify, but... I did see the Caspian border at night screenshots, Cookie. Somebody posted something, it was on Twitter or Reddit or something like that, where they just, you know, graphically changed that map to see what it would look like at night, and it's really cool. And I also love um, how they talked about in the in the naval strike maps that the sun actually moves as the battle as the battle goes. So actually having it change completely over, like start it just before dusk, go sure. through dusk, and and then get gradually darker as the as the you know tickets come down. That would be actually a pretty interesting because that would definitely change gameplay, um, you know, hugely from the beginning to the to the end there. Yeah. So I mean, they can they can do something like that. They have all those tools that they're disposal so that would be kind of cool i think a lot of the gadgets and stuff from special forces and bf2 would be cool to have back i've seen people ask for it for a long time grappling hooks zip lines zip lines that would be so much fun right and and it's just like i mean they did in bf2 you know the frostbite engine is going to be able to handle that really well um and it added that it just it added something to it i mean people may say oh we're just gonna have more snipers and rooftops but the point is you know, you can actually get up there and make certain areas of the map only accessible if you use a grappling hook or, or whatever. It'd be fun. I don't really want urban warfare that's just more of the same. I want something new. And lately, the gadgets we've been getting were kind of like meh, like the AA mines. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Good. It's like, great. I just, like, and they mentioned Sienna, too. Like, that was, I think that was a really well-done map as well. What was that in? That was Battlefield 3. That was, um... Oh. Like, it was, like, the Italian city with the bridges that went across and... Yeah, yeah. That is true, which, and that was that was very urban, but still had some tanks in it and stuff. And it still had indoor situations with the apartments in different ways, and then it was also outdoor with, with some streets and, um... Yeah. That was actually one of the maps that people sort of would have liked to have seen in Second Assault as a I fan favorite. I, yeah, I would have liked to have seen it. I wish they had done brought back more than four. Yeah, Maybe there's five. a few maps. And added Sienna. Everybody was like, oh, Peak. And I'm like, nah, Damn Event was not... I mean, it was fun, don't get me wrong, but it was not one of my top five. It was a good rush map, though. It was a very good Rush map. And I think they may need something like that as well, because I know there's a lot of people who like Rush. That, you know, it was also good 5v5. It was, it was a very good Yeah, you didn't, need a, you didn't want 64 players on that map. It would be a, be a good map in Rush or something you could play with 16 people, even. Like in, in public, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't Tactical think I'd want to play it with <laughs> four randoms. Tactical nuke? 
Let's not get into what people want. Yeah, no. That'll go crazy. Just what we hope for. Like, I hope for some good urban maps that'll have, um, you know, still some ability for some vehicles, but... Yeah, like saying Crossing had one tank per side in Conquest Large. And I think there was an APC. Were there APCs? Hummers. And like a Jeep. So there was not too. very much, but it was one of those where you could... Well, you could get into the tank, <clears throat> and if you had a decent team of support around you, a couple of NGs and some people to keep infantry at your back, you could you could do really well on that map. It was also not bad in Rush, that one, actually. No. I'm surprised how much Rush I played in BF3, now that I think of it. I didn't used to, but I'd do it every once in a while to sort of... Oh, the APC was in Rush, not in Conquest, right? No tank in Rush, though. But it was one of those things where if your tank went down and the enemy team's tank was still up, you were in trouble on that map. So there was, like, value to that, you know, as opposed to, like, oh, here's eight vehicles. Yeah. Have fun. <clears throat> it's a little more strategic. Yeah. Well, and that map, too, could be very... It was easy for someone to go around a corner behind a building and then your javelin was kind of useless at that point, too. True. There's a lot of good use Because you have to cover. maintain lock and... Yeah. Yep. So I'm assuming we're going to get four maps again, like every DLC, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm guessing they'll be based in China. I'm trying to think back to some of the single-player maps that took place in China, because there was, there was some urban stuff there. The hangar. There was... Um, the one at the very beginning, which is sort of reminiscent of what's the... It's the, it's the map that always freezes to 360. Yeah, when you, like, the shanty town kind of, when you're, um... Yeah, but I'm thinking of the, the multiplayer map that's similar to one of the single-player missions. And it's, um... It's, it is urban warfare. It's the one with all the skyscrapers. And it's, that one's sort of dark. It has a day-night cycle. Dawnbreaker. Oh. Dawnbreaker. Xbox Breaker. Um... <laughs> yeah, like clockwork. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that that was similar to the single player. One of the missions in the single player campaign had you mm -hmm. going through an area like that. So we could see, see stuff like that. Um, I'm thinking we'll probably see one very similar to before you head to the dam to blow the dam, that area. Where it's mostly like literally a shantytown town right. like that you're trying to make your way through. I think we'll see probably something very similar to that. Yeah, that could be that could be interesting. I think this DLC is going to be good for people who like infantry gameplay with a little bit of vehicle support, which I think should work well for you, for example, because you'd like that game style. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's just my preferred game mode. It's not that I don't <clears throat> like other styles. Well, you I, seem I to have a real problem getting into vehicles with me. Because you are a terrible driver. You're awful. I will never forgive I'm you for excellent that. excellent driver. No, 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 no. You jumped out of a Jeep and sent me flying into a fuel tanker, and I went up in flames. It was right there. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, let's start. I'm just digging that grave. What about, uh... What about those attachments? Somebody mentioned that the Iron V is actually pretty useful in Operation Locker to see through smoke and, and some stuff like that. Which, in BF3, and I'll admit I never really used the Iron V much in BF4. In BF3, that thing didn't look through anything. No. Have you used it? You've played Locker extensively. Is that yeah. something that you'd use as a... Not me personally, strategy? just because that's not... It's not really an attachment or a gadget I would use, unless it was, like, absolutely necessary. Right. Mostly because I found in Locker in particular, a lot of people don't use smoke. I could see it being useful against smoke and s such things, but in Maybe Locker in generally Metro people might be don't. good. Metro is usually full of smoke, even though I've seen smoke. a lot of people use the uh, the flares to distract in uh, yeah. Metro, which works pretty well, actually. Frustratingly well if you're on the other side and you get up there and all you see is red flares everywhere and you can't see shit. 
by those elevators. It's like just a wall of them. Yeah. So Patch says in the chat that the iron V sites in BF3 are a whole lot clearer than the one in BF4. I could see that being I, true. I just miss that feeling from special forces in, in BF2. And I think that they have an opportunity to, to bring that back because they didn't do it in BF3. And I have the feeling that I've, I've seen enough people ask for some of those gadgets over the years. And, you know, they, they brought back Carrier Assault, like a Titan Mode version. So right. there seems to be a feeling that I get from DICE where they kind of like want to listen to what people want to see and try to bring that. So there may be... I actually have pretty high hopes that we'll see something like that. I'm hoping that these don't turn out like China Rising, though. I'm really hoping that they they are memorable and um, you know kind of like the naval strike maps have been just you know. Well, you know the naval strike maps were they designed by Di oh shit was that Dice LA like Danger Close or was that still Stockholm? It was still Stockholm, wasn't it? That's yeah, because um, Firewall was talking about yeah. how it's really their you know like you were saying about the the larger attack boats you know have to. They aren't completely overpowered, and that they can't get to everywhere on the map. It's kind of their nod to the to the rib and the hovercraft, and that those are really the only uh, boats that can get up in some of those canals. Yeah. So. So I think that was still Stockholm. It was, yeah. Chat I remember said that too. Um, so it will be interesting to see because the next DLC will not be Stockholm, but you know the urban warfare might actually be well suited to be developed by X danger close people because they've done Warfighter and they're sort of used to the smaller maps that are not quite as large. I don't know, I I've been happy with Naval Strike and I I don't know whether or not that maybe has put me on a bit of a high going forward, hoping that the next DLC will be just as good because Second Assault was pretty good in my opinion, even though those were, you know, like we talked about there, maps that have already been established and they just tweaked them. But, uh, we're getting raided now by Kravitz. What? Heck. Ah! No, we don't want those stream raids when the same thing oh. Tim did earlier. Hi, Chaos. I have a very large dog coming to visit me. Aw. Sweet. So we're hopeful that... Do you um, want to play some after we're done? I don't. I don't know. I'm like... I'm still, I'm still a little hungover, people. I'm, I'm like, I went to a wedding last night, and I was the videographer, and it was an open bar. So, <clears throat> don't, you're don't, lucky she's here doing this now. Me. Yeah. Otherwise, it would have just been a picture, me pretending to talk to her. You, uh, Y three W, Metro is such a cluster. Well, yes, that's because you're playing on a sixty-four man server. It's meant to be. It's a meat grinder. <sighs> And Battlefield 3, that was basically the boost map. That was where you went to level every gun and get every attachment and just get your assignments done, get your 100 kills in because it was, you know, a couple, couple yeah. rounds on a 1,000 ticket, 64-man meat grinder, you were going to have it, whatever yeah. unlock you were after. <sighs> I would suggest playing in a, in a lower man server if you really want to play Metro. 32 is nice. Hey, Kravitz. 32 48 man. isn't bad. I think that's pushing it, but... 40, 48 for me has almost been the sweet spot for Conquest because it gives that in between. So what is this link that Patch posted? It's the That's BF3 RNV. Okay, and I guess he's going to post the other one. You oh know my what? Gosh, we just I keep thinking though here. of... Huh? I keep thinking of Urban Warfare and I keep thinking of Close Quarters DLC for BF3. But that's not urban. That just occurred to me. That's just indoor. Like that was exclusively what was? Uh, close quarters. Right. See, I don't want more like that. Which those were those were great because it was fast paced. It was constantly moving. They were small. You were always indoor. Were yeah. you always indoor? Well, I mean, there was like well, a courtyard except minus a couple, but yeah, patios. Yeah, I basically like to see larger versions of those with maybe a little bit more going on. Right, you know, kind of like Sienna or Bazaar, something like that. Those were very urban. And you said you and you loved close quarters. You played. Oh yeah, the I heck played out the crap of out of that domination. Yeah. In that, it was my fix for getting something 
um, that was that was sort of instant gratification. It was quick. You could still rack up a lot of kills, and I'm not one that's afraid of dying. So you're yeah, you're definitely a flag runner. You love to oh, yeah. do the loop, and that's I'm like, what I would do. no, I'm gonna sit on B. B is my home. Ain't nobody coming in this house. I will wave to you I every time I run B past forever. B to get the other flags. Like I would just tear up points on capturing stuff a lot. But that's not, you know, it occurred to me that's not urban warfare. That's not what I should be expecting of Dragon's Teeth. I should be expecting something more like Grand Bazaar and um, Probably. I Crossing. Would, I would picture it, hopefully, of a, a happy blend. Of the two. Yeah. Maybe somewhere where it's very similarly set up to how those, those uh, close quarters maps were, but also have the the open option of you know of a conquest style yeah i think they'll have some of that where they have some indoor stuff like you said you know sink crossing had a couple of buildings that had a few floors in it but it wasn't you know there were no flags inside of that or anything like that not inside no. the buildings no, there was one uh kind of in between two with the garage and the courtyard and then there was one down on the the little alleyway there and then one back further in the rubble there weren't really any in the building right exactly they were all either set out in some sort of courtyard situation i hope that they don't add too much stuff to those maps though like they have a tendency of adding all these i i don't want another flood zone is what i'm saying like right oh god I, I, now you just that gave me that idea yeah See, that map is just awful to me. That's and urban. I was, right. And we were talking, I forget, it was a couple months back, like right after release. And it was like, evolution everywhere. And it was like, okay, let's take a map of roofs and <laughs> put some water on the bottom. Sniper happy holes and flood the ground level. Oh, look at that. That's so amazing. Yeah, that's a really good point. I really hope they do that. And I don't see anything like that. Um, by the way, I, PH Prof mentioned it now in the chat, and he mentioned it in the YouTube comment. He demanded that I do five solid minutes of hovercraft driving, and you have to be the passenger. And I said, I'll do it. You're going to have to convince her. <laughs> Good luck convincing me to be the, the passenger in that. How about I race you? What, like... Like, we each get a like hovercraft, hover and we set up Mario a... Mario Kart? Like, yeah. hover carts? <laughs> sure. And we'll race around... That I would do. Okay. Okay. I might do five minutes solid of being the gunner or whatever on the hovercraft. You're just a body. In I the don't think we'd make it gun. five minutes alive. I think I think you would get us killed before before time was up. Is it an empty server? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'd probably still get us killed. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Tony, I keep trying to set up. I, I want to actually. I I could use the wheel for that for hovercraft. That would be funny. I accidentally had the wheel and pedals plugged in the other day, and I kept wondering why my guy kept sprinting, and it's because I was, like, my feet were being bored, and I was playing with the pedals under my desk. And apparently that did things. <laughs> so. Uh, there was uh, actually a guy that, that used to play Counter-Strike. He was blind. He played with a wheel? Uh-huh. Really? He played with... Um, like a trackball and like foot pedals or something. Like it was really, it was really interesting. Well, they do have that stinky footboard, like which is a horrible blind. name, by the way. But they have that, so you have like extra macro buttons on your feet, which sounds weird to me. And yes, you are the only person who loves Flood Zone. Yes, Pash. I don't know what kind of drugs you're on, but <laughs> <laughs> Flood Zone is a pretty send horrible me game some. map in whatever game. I mode. just don't like that map at all. I just. No, it turns into a clusterfuck. <laughs> Domination or TDM is the only one I can sort of stomach it on, barely. Because you just kind of try to stay to the rooftops and, you know, do the whole flag running thing. But anything larger, with the Conquest Large, a rush on it is god-awful. The way that the last set of MCOMs is set up on that map is uh, is cruel for both teams. But... We're not going to get into 30 minutes about Flood Zone. I can't do it. Nope. Sorry. Nope. <laughs> you can stay in the chat after we go and y'all can talk it up all you want. But 
So Dragon's but Teeth, I, I hopefully. Does, I'm just hoping it's not like that in Dragon's Teeth. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. No, I, I'm hoping it will be inspired by BF3's urban maps, because those were pretty good. Well, at least, you know, use some of those elements, because a lot of those maps were, were very well done. I, at least I thought. There were, you know, there are people that, that don't enjoy those maps at all, but... Well, there's always, yeah. <sighs> and that's the nice thing about... Ah, I didn't mean to actually play it right now. Um... That's one of the nice things about Battlefield. You have variety in maps, so usually you can find something that you're you're a fan of. Um, any idea as to what gadgets might go well with Dragon's Teeth? Because they're going to add something, whether it's a couple new weapons. I know there's one gun in particular do. you're hoping for. Which I don't oh, know if you want to mention yes. now or you want to leave it for the upcoming video. But Well, I'm, I'm hoping they'll bring back the L86A2. Yeah. Just it, because... It was not BF3, so there's a pretty good chance, I think, that it will come back. Yeah. And I still want... I don't know what gadgets they can add that relate to urban warfare. Other than the ones we talked about, like zip lines and grappling hooks. Yeah. Could they do an underslung grappling hook that you mount like a... Like a grenade launcher. Like in the single player? Was kind of. Anything? Well, they had those grappling hooks that they launched. Oh, the you, thing the made in end. Sweden that almost right, always so, works. Right. <laughs> I love that part, by the way. I laughed so hard when that happened. Um, seeing those being able to underslung, that would be interesting. See, they already have the damn thing in or the game. A, or a separate... Um, you know, gadget for it, like like your M320 can be. It can either be mounted on the rail or not. Well, in, in Special Forces, I think it was just a grappling hook that you threw with rope attached. It wasn't even fired by anything. I think. But you're right. They I want, have that. I want a projectile. Yeah. I, well, and they have yeah. that in the game already <laughs> in the single player. I'd forgotten about right. that. So that's easy. It will definitely be there. Confirmed. <laughs> well, now we're just not... We're, can we hold this thought so I can run to the head? Sure. I will talk to Patch about Flood Zone. God. <laughs> I can play the Flood Zone video that he sent me, I think. Can I fit that on here somehow? No, I can't. But I can add it on here. Let's see. Um, why did it? Whoa, that's not a large player. That's a huge player. What the fuck? What are you doing to me, YouTube? Good enough. I'm gonna smush these recons up there. There they are. There they are. Yeah, there they are. Yeah. Come on, I need a rock cannon. I did. Oh, uh, someone spied uh, my uh, uh, <coughs> my AR. All right, we're gonna mow these guys down. I'm surprised it took that long. No, it's not a rough neighborhood, yeah, right but guy. that is my baby. <laughs> Duncan said he's gonna send me something on Skype, which is always a frightening proposition when that happens. Because <laughs> it could be a proposition. <laughs> what are we? What are we looking at? Sorry, that was the part of the video. Oh, was there more? Do you want me to finish that? Finish it. Yeah, what? Here we go. I'm gonna get you kind of close. Oh, 
<laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna go over for another bat. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're taking oh it. Oh my god. Back there. Yeah. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. This never happens to me when I've played that map. If I'm in a helicopter with somebody, they either A, jump out, <laughs> or we get locked on by 18 stingers. <laughs> or just one, and then flip sideways. Oh my goodness. That brings back memories of the... That I love to see. That of makes the me happy. Venom or the Blackhawk, whatever the hell they had in Battlefield 2 on that one map. Master Market or whatever it was called, something like that. When the miniguns were still firing like exploding bullets or something insane, you could just tear people <laughs> up and they'd rarely ever overheat. You, that map was literally won by whoever got into that helicopter first. You got a full bus going for the entire round, and you were on the other team, you were fucked. <laughs> and then they patched it and tweaked it and balanced it because we need a balance. And... <laughs> No, it wasn't that one patch. It wasn't BF2. It was some of the most fun gameplay ever if you were sitting in a helicopter. Now, that those was... maps are some I enjoyed, too. Like Marquez Monolith and uh, yeah, the Aftermath maps. Those were really good. Uh, those I enjoyed. That was my favorite, or well, my second favorite DLC in BF3. So. But they can't bring those back, because they'll have to do no. something similar. Um, but in a Chinese setting. So they'll be... I don't know. I think they'll look a lot like Dawnbreaker is what I'm thinking. Because that could be I considered I don't think they'll urban. look entire like that. How do, do you like that map, though? Because that's probably one of their more urban warfare type maps that they currently have. I do enjoy Dawnbreaker. Oddly <laughs> enough, I actually enjoy it on on Rush. I don't know if I've ever played that one and, in Rush. And uh, Obliteration. Obliteration is good Or not Obliteration, one. not with the bomb. No, the Domination? The other one that has um, the fuse. points to blow up to, yes. No. Yes. I don't fuck if I know. They changed the names on me, and I'm like, just keep them the same and then add a couple. Then I'd be okay, but... I think it's probably the fuse you're thinking everything of. on me. Well, they went to, like, one name style game modes. Yeah, instead like of Conquest game. Domination, it's just Domination. Domination, right. But... What? But yeah, I enjoyed that map. But I, like I said, I think we're going to see probably something similar to that shanty town that you're in uh, in the single player before you get to the dam, which we've already seen the dam in Linking Dam. Yeah, that's true. That was a disappointment. I hate that map. I mean, the single players kind of follow the theme. Well, that's what know, it, the that's multiplayer what I mean. maps follow the yeah. theme of, of whatever. So drawing parallels to that is probably a pretty good guess as to what we might see. So the Shantytown, I think, yeah, you, you might be onto something there. Because you spend quite a bit of time in that area. And then you have the grassy, you know, kind of grassy knoll area uh, when you're heading to the air base. And then you have that hangar, which would be... So really? you, you played the single player just like two weeks ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's very fresh it's, and I in my mind. Finished I finally it last got around year. to it. So I don't remember much of that. Um, and then there will be one more DLC after that. We don't know much about that. It's just like the war comes to the its epic conclusion or something like that. It sounds right. very, <clears throat> very foreboding. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's going to be like, so we'll see. Yeah, there is a single player. <laughs> the single player was not... What did you think of it? I thought it was actually not bad. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this play style a lot more than, than the one in Battlefield 3. How was it different? Well, in ba well, okay, it was kind of different. In Battlefield 3, you were kind of, like, given this situation and that's what you do. And in, in Battlefield 4, you kind of could choose your way through through that mission. You could you, There were a number of ways to do it. Okay. It was also I felt a like more Battlefield story 3 driven. was very right. I felt like Battlefield 3 was very this is what you do. Yeah. People always dismiss the single player and say that it was a waste of time and they shouldn't focus on it and stuff, but um I thought it was pretty well done. 
I saw an interesting question posed on Reddit yesterday that something maybe we can talk about in a future episode was, would Battlefield be a better game if it didn't compete with Call of Duty? I, that's a topic I think we should talk about at some point. Because there's some interesting... It depends. Yeah. If um, by compete... Well, we can we can say it. Yeah, say I was it. just thinking. It just occurred. It just popped yeah. in my head. I saw somebody yeah, mention Call of Duty in the chat. Time. Okay. Does anyone in the chat have any other comments, things they want to see in Dragon's Teeth? Any fears, hopes, dreams, opportunities? I hear that word a lot at work these days. It's such a fucking stupidly thinly veiled word for problems. Opportunities. Yeah. See, at my work, that's a thinly veiled word for sell them stuff. Oh, like yeah. For sales. That's what that means. Right. That's that's a opportunity. Yeah. No, for here, it's like, uh, yeah, shit's broken. There's an opportunity <laughs> for us to improve things. <laughs> it's like, no, shit's broken. Let's not fuck around. Let's call it what it is. <laughs> so, I think that would be good. Um... So Naval Strike's been successful, I think. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping that the variety in service will increase a bit more on that. I really hope that you got, that uh, DICE will start up server rentals for console players soon because they've been almost six months now without it, and that was a feature that was in BF3, and I was surprised that it wasn't included in the beginning, to be honest. Well, they've but. said there's some major problem with with something I can't remember and that's why they haven't released it yet yeah but there's always a major problem well something I don't know I say just days. just make console players happy then they'll stop whining I, I know that I hear a lot from console players that the variety of servers out there isn't as great as it like and I know that when you add custom servers that changes you know drastically, drastically. well yeah. yeah so that'd be good for them to have that Okay, so Dragon's Teeth will be out in a couple months or so. We'll see how right we are, how wrong we are. Oh, I just see what Duncan sent me. Do I dare take a look? No. Um, it's something else. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, this video will go up, and I'm kind of tempted to split it in two. Like, one for the naval strike, one for the other stuff, but I'm not sure yet. But it will end up on YouTube later this week, probably on Wednesday. I believe Tim's going to be working on a lowdown episode for tomorrow. Monday. And then on Friday, we will uh, demonstrate my poor tactical abilities in Battlefield 4. <laughs> so that should be good. I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Katie, for, you know, doing the sure. doing the show today after yeah, we'd probably will. rather be sleeping and everybody that's watching in the chat. Yes, I appreciate y'all coming out. That uh, makes it easier to, you know, get up and do this kind of stuff. When you have good people supporting you, so yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. We actually had a lot of good feedback on the video, so we'll keep bringing those to you, and hopefully, you guys will keep watching and enjoying it. Until then, I want to wish everybody a happy Sunday and a good week, and we'll see you on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye, everybody. Bye.